Hey everybody, we've reached 200,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel and as a massive thank you to all of you who've supported us along the way and to celebrate as well, we thought what we'd do is have a look through the archives of the Painting Academy and pick out one of our favourite videos and put it onto the channel. So we'd like to present to you now a video on painting the Silent King for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. And as you'll see, this is a long and detailed video that goes through the whole process of painting such a large centerpiece miniature. Now if you enjoy it, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and if you do really like it, then head on over to duncanroads.com, which is the Academy website where you'll find loads more videos just like this. But in the meantime, we really hope you enjoy this one. Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how to paint what is surely one of the most impressive models from Games Workshop, and that is the Silent King, the Supreme Commander of the Necrons for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. Now this miniature is one of those models that looks really intimidating at first glance, but in this video we're going to break down the whole process of painting it to make it nice and easy and accessible so that no matter what your skill level, you'll be able to approach painting it to get a result that you're going to be really happy with. So we hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the desk. Painting a model like Zarek the Silent King can be a daunting prospect. It's an absolutely beautiful model, but it's very large and very complex as well, which you'll know very well after putting it together. So a model like this can be very difficult to paint because it can be tricky to know where to begin. But in this video, we're gonna walk you through the entire process. One that's logical, makes sense, and is also really satisfying as well because it will give great results very quickly. To do this, what we're going to be doing is breaking the model down into painting it in three main phases. And to start out with, what we're going to do is to paint the main dais, along with the two men here that float either side of it. Then we're going to move on to the Silent King himself, along with his two pharons, and also his cloak as well. With that done, we're then going to move on to painting all the green details of the miniature, and we'll do this all at the same time across the various sub-assemblies to ensure they're consistent with each other. So in this way, what we're going to do is to get some great results very quickly. To help out with that, I've built the model in various sub-assemblies that allow us to access all these details. So you can see here, I have the dais and the men here as built as they are in the instructions, but I've not glued on the crew or that cloak as well. So this way, we're going to be able to access all that detail. I've then undercoated everything with some lead belcher spray, and with that done, we can now start painting. So to begin with, we're going to start out with the dais and also those two menus. So phase one, we're going to be painting the dais and also those men here. So for this, I'm going to start out by concentrating on the dais, but all the methods and techniques I use here, do them on the men here at the same time as well. And the first step is to apply some shade to the miniature. Agrax shade is the perfect color here. And what this is going to do is to start out the process of giving a kind of oily, grimy appearance to the silver metal. Now, not all of the model is going to be silver, but it is still important to paint the entire thing with this color at this stage. And you'll see why in just a moment. But to apply it, go for a really large brush. I have a large dry brush here from City which is great size, nice soft bristles as well, so really good for this sort of thing. And using this, what you need to do is load it with plenty of paint. Now don't worry about using your palette here, just really get plenty on there straight from the pot, and then pick a starting point. So for example, the top of this part just here, and just start applying the paint to it. There like that, just letting it run into all the recessed detail as you go along. Now this is going to be serving two main purposes. Firstly, it's going to be giving some definition to that metal, which you can see just there, which is great. But also what it's going to do is give a really nice surface for all the techniques we're going to be using from here. Because if you've ever used this silver undercoat or retributor armor, you'll know it gives a very, very smooth finish and it can be quite tricky for some colors to stick to it. So applying a wash like this, first of all, actually gives it a really good surface for all the colors we're going to be applying after this. Now, because this silver undercoat is so smooth, there is something that you need to watch out for, in particular on areas like this, these kind of blade-like structures. And I'll show you that now by just getting some fresh paint and applying it to an area like that. See how quickly it drops off. Now, you are going to get some paint dripping off this anyway, just because of the technique we're using. So if you haven't already, be sure to protect your work surface with some newspaper or something like that. But it's because it's so smooth, you see, it just runs right to the bottom. And the longer you leave it, you can see it's collecting more and more down there and becoming a big blob. Now, you've got to keep an eye out for that because if it dries like that, it'll give a texture to it and it's quite unpleasant. And later on, we want it to be lighter towards the bottom of these instead. So don't think about this as applying lots of this kind of paint to it. Instead, just look for a thin coat of this across the whole model. It will, of course, collect more in recessed details, which is what we want. But on these flatter areas, if you get that happening, just use your brush to take away the excess there like that. So you leave behind a very thin coat of it on that area like that, just staining it slightly, giving it that texture that we want. But also, we're going to come back to this later on to colour it a little bit more in the areas we want it to be stronger. 
So now it's just a matter of painting this all over with those things bared in mind. It is going to take a little bit of time to get into all the details, but don't worry about it. Once you have painted this all over, give the model around about an hour to dry. Once that wash is completely dry, we can now move on to the next stage. And it will dry a little bit blotchy, especially on those large smooth areas, but don't worry about it because we are going to neaten up as we go and add successive techniques and colours to the miniature. And the next thing that we need to do is to start dry brushing it to start to pick out some of the texture. And for this, a great colour to use is Necron Compound, and to apply it, I'm going to be using that large dry brush I had in the previous step. It's the same brush, I just made sure I really cleaned it and dried out the bristles before starting this stage. And to do this, what you should do is just get a small amount of the paint onto your brush there like that. Just a little bit more than that, I think. There we go. And then on the tissue, just start doing a rounded motion like this to work the paint into the bristles and to get rid of the excess too. And you want to get rid of the majority of that paint. I was testing out the tissue until not much is coming off the brush. There we go, like that. And once you've got to that point, it's then just a matter of putting this onto the miniature, just flicking it back and forth to catch the texture. Now later on, a lot of this detail is going to be picked out in black, but it's important at this stage that you still dry brush everything because, well, you'll see why later on. All you do is just flick back and forth like this, and you can see that lighter silver colour starting to catch those edges and the texture, and it gives a nice highlight on those areas there like that. Now when you get to these spines, there's something to consider because in the box artwork they actually get lighter towards the end, and so what we're going to do is start to build up that effect at this stage. So to begin with, dry brush like you did elsewhere, just gradually applying it like this so the colour's mostly catching on the edges, but as you get towards the top just start to become a little bit more intense. So really start to work the brush onto it like this so you get more of that silver catching. And so what you start to get happen, you see, is that silver starts to become brighter the further up that we go. And really it's just a matter of spending more time in these areas, and the more time you spend, the lighter it's going to get. So you can see here the effect's starting to happen as it's darker down there and starting to get lighter up there. And there we are, the dry brushing's been applied, and you can see by just gradually building up that effect on those spines, you get a really nice transition from the dark to light metal on the back there. And also something I want to quickly point out, when you're doing this, just be careful on the steps, because there's only a very small contact point holding those on there, so if you're a little bit too overzealous with the dry brushing, it's very easy to break those off, so just be careful around those. But with all that done, we can now move on to the next step, which is to return to some more washing, because now we've got a nice metal tone appearing on here, but now we've got a very different texture on the miniature, thanks to that wash we put on earlier on, and also the dry brushing. So what we're going to do now is apply another coat of Agrax Urshade, and you'll see this time it settles a little bit more evenly to give a smoother tone than we had in the first step. And to apply it, again go to a large brush. Now I'm no longer using that large dry brush from Citadel because I don't want to risk contaminating my Agrax Urshade with any of the Necron compound for it. So we've gone for a fresh brush that's clean, although another Citadel brush of this size will be just fine. This one here is from the Army Painter, this is a vehicle slash terrain brush. And to apply the paint, just going to do the exact same thing that we did in the original step. So load up plenty on the brush and to start applying it all over the miniature. Now you might wonder why we're doing this again after that dry brushing, and what's going to happen now is that highlight that we got from the dry brush is going to show through whilst we also get a darker tone on the metal. And you can see now it is just settling more evenly on those areas as well, giving a really nice effect. So now again it's just a matter of applying this all over, and as with the spines, like in the previous step, just keep an eye out for too much being applied at once. Just apply it fairly thinly like that, and you can see it just starts to boost that effect of it being lighter towards the bottom there and darker towards the top. And there we are, the second coat of Agrax Earth Shade is now completely dry as well, and as you can see, particularly on the flatter areas, it's dried much smoother this time. And with that done, we can now move on to dry brushing it with Necron Compound once more, only this time what it's going to do is lift the highlights a little bit more, separating them from the recesses that we've got on here, and just making the details stand out a bit more. So to apply it, what we're going to do is the exact same technique as the previous dry brush. So back to that large dry brush I was using earlier, and like earlier, we just need to get some of this loaded on the brush, and on some tissue, work it into the bristles, getting rid of the excess there like that. And with this what we're looking to do is again apply it very lightly to the majority of the model, just catching the edges. So for example on the front just down here, I'm just going to very lightly start flicking it across like that, so just to get that highlight appearing on those corners. But when we get to the spines we want to do just like we did before, and just make sure there's only a small amount on there, being very light towards the base, but as you get further up, just be a bit more forceful as you apply it so the colour starts to get lighter once again.
And there we are, the metal's now looking really aged, which is perfect for this machine. And you can see as well that the darker areas are much more smooth now. And again, we've got that nice transition from the darker areas to the lighter areas on those spines. And with that done, what we can do now is start moving on to emphasizing that transition a little bit more, and just exaggerating it by, first of all, returning to Agrax Earthshade. Only this time, we're going to apply it in a much more controlled, selective way. So to do this, what you need is a medium to large brush. And I have a monster brush from the Army Painter to do this. And what I'm gonna do is use a palette this time to control how much I'm applying at once because it's very important you don't put on loads here. So you see I've just got a little puddle like that. I'm just going to get rid of the excess off on some tissue and draw up fresh. So this way my brush isn't swamped with the paint. And what I'm going to do is pick one spine at a time. For example, we've got this one just here. And what you do is apply some of this towards the dark part of it. So in this case, it's towards the top going down maybe a fifth of the way. So to around about there. And you can see it's very thin on there. And whilst it's still wet, I'm just going to wash my brush. Just make sure it's still damp and just start pulling that paint down from there like that. And what that does is just exaggerates that transition from the dark to the light there like that. So depending on how dark you want this to be, you can do this multiple times. I think two times should be just fine for a model like this, but what I'm going to do now is carry on doing this on each of the spines. Once that wash is dry, you can see it really darkens down those spines at the base of each one and just really emphasizes that light area that comes out towards the end of them. And what we need to do now is just to finish off those spines by applying a fine highlight, this time with a really bright silver. So we're going to go for Stormhose Silver. And what we're going to do here is apply it very thinly so it gives a really sharp finish to them. So to apply it, go for a medium-sized brush. And I have a regiment brush here from the Army Painter for this, so you could go smaller if you wanted to. And what you need to do is to thin the paint down in your palette, just checking to make sure it flows very easily from your brush. The key here is not to overdo this. We only want a very small amount of silver. So you can see I'm just checking it on the palette, making sure it's flowing easily from the bristles there and just getting rid of the excess. So really there's not that much paint on my brush at all. And using this, what I'm going to do is look towards the ends of each of these spines. So this one, for example, I'm looking to apply a highlight about a quarter of the way down from the tip. So I'm going to angle my brush so it's at about 45 degrees from the flat of each side and just gently start skimming along like that. So I get a lighter part of the silver, just catching that edge like that, just to finish it off with that bright highlight. And with that fine highlight applied, you can see it just gives that real impression of sharpness on those spines. And with that done, we're now finished with the majority of the silver on this piece, and we can start painting in some of the smaller details. So at this stage, make sure you get some clean water and also clean your palette if you need to, just to ensure you don't contaminate any of the future colors with any flecks of metal from them. Well, what we need to do now is first of all, start blocking out all the details we want to be black. And for this, we're gonna use some black Templar. After that, to highlight it, we're gonna dry brush it using some Thunderhawk blue, then a finer highlighter, Fenrisian gray, and then finally we'll return to Stormhost Silver and this is going to be to pick out some select details. But first of all what we need is some Black Templar and to apply this I've gone back to that monster brush and the reason why we're using this rather than a regular black paint is because this flows really nicely so it's actually really useful for getting into a little the nooks and crannies that you get in a model like this. But also it's such a strong contrast paint that it works very well as a base coat here. We just need to make sure that we apply two coats of it to ensure it's solid before we move on to the next step. Now with this, I like to use a palette to help control how much I'm applying at once. And what you want to do once you've got some there ready, is load up your brush and start painting onto anything that you want to be black. Now this is why we dry brushed everything with silver, because at this stage, everything's been highlighted on it. So if you want to paint the model quickly, you don't actually have to do that much black. So it's really entirely up to you how much you do. I'm looking for mostly the areas where the crew are though. So for example, handrails, platforms, the steps, also gonna do the engines, basically anything like that. But it's really entirely up to you how much you do here. Remember when using contrast paint, think of it as using felt tip pens. So just start with an area, just start working your way out from that, applying it smoothly and letting it dry before you return to it. With that Black Templar applied, you can see we've got quite the transformation now. With that done, we can now move on to highlighting it. And first of all, to do this, we need to dry brush it using some Thunderhawk Blue. Now for this, I'm using a medium dry brush from Citadel, and you can see what I'm doing is very carefully focusing it on all those sharper edges and corners. So just gradually building up the color so we get that highlight appearing on those edges there like that. As for the designs that are in the middle of these areas, like these ones you've got on the inside of here, just very lightly flick your brush across like that so they catch some of the color, but not too much that it doesn't go too blue. With that Thunderhawk blue applied, you can see those edges starting to stand out. And now what we're gonna do is bring them out a little bit more by using some Fenrisian gray. And now I'm using one of the hobby dry brushes from the Army Painter for a little bit more control. Because of this color, what I want to do is just lightly focus that dry brushing onto the sharpest corners. 
So you can see here on these steps, what I'm looking for is these little edges that we've got on this part where it arcs in on the inside there. I'm just very lightly running the brush on those corners like that, just letting the bristles and the paint catch those edges. And you can see this way it just sharpens it up and just helps that area stand out. With that dry brushing done, we can now return to Stormhost Silver for these little details just here, because from that black Templar, these have really dulled down. So what we need to do is use this color just to reestablish it. So just very gently pick out the raised texture. Now to do this, go for a small brush. I'm using a detail brush from the Army Painter, and you can see it's quite delicate, but as long as you're just very gentle about it and let the bristles catch that raised area, it's quite easy to get that detail. Now in addition, be sure to apply some of this around the outer rim as well, all the way around here. And with that silver picked out, we're now going to move on to a drastically different area of colour because now it's time to start painting in that teal colour that appears on the miniature. Now some of this does appear on the staffs of the crew, but don't worry about that because we are going to address that later on. But for what we've got here, we need to do some of this on the actual dais, but also it's on those men here. And that's what we're going to concentrate on to show you how to do it, but the technique is the same throughout. Now to start out with, what we need is some Stegard on scale green for the base coat, and then we're going to start dry brushing it, much like we did on those spines on the dais. First of all, for this, what we need is some Sotek green and then some Temple Guard blue. But first of all we need Stegard on scale green and to apply this I'm using a large dry brush from the Army Painter which even though it's a dry brush it's a good size for the kind of area that we're covering here. And what we need to do is to get some on the palette, thin down with that touch of water so it's nice and smooth and once you've done that it's just a matter of loading up your brush and blocking in this area. So what we're looking at doing is this raised part in the middle, this kind of cracked stone that we've got. And when you're doing this just be really careful of that silver trim that works its way around the outside. The good thing about a brush like this is it's got a chisel point so you can turn it around like this and this way you can accurately get to those areas there like that. Once you've got an even base coat, the next thing to do is to begin dry brushing and start out with what we need is some Sotek green. And to apply this, I'm using a medium dry brush from Citadel for a bit more control than what we did in previous dry brushes. But remember earlier on when we're doing those spines and we're making them lighter on one side and darker on the other. That's exactly what we want to do here as well. So you can see to begin with, I'm being quite light in dry brushing this color so it catches that raised texture, particularly towards the bottom. But the further up you go, just add more and more of this technique and more of this paint. So just start to do a circular motion like this so the color gets gradually more intense and this way we can control a gradient building up from a lighter colour towards the top and leaving it darker towards the bottom. Once you're happy with that gradient, you're then ready to build it up even further by using some Temple Guard Blue applied in the same kind of way as we did previously. So to begin with, again do that light dry brush just covering very lightly the whole area like this, but then really concentrate that dry brushing when you get close to the top from around about here. And with that, the dry brushing is done, but this colour is still a little bit too blue, so what we need to do is shift it to make it a little bit greener now. And to do this, the ideal way is to glaze it using a yellow. And so for this, what I'm going to use is some Cassandora yellow, but I'm going to dilute it with some contrast medium to allow it to apply nice and smoothly onto the area that we're painting. So to make this mix, what you need to do is to go for a largest brush that's good for applying washes. So I've got a monster brush from the Army Painter here. What we need to do is to first of all start out with some of the yellow, just so you can see the kind of mix I'm making. I'm just getting two brush falls there like that. And I want to go for slightly more medium than I've got of the actual shade there. So it's going to be diluting it a little bit more than half and half. So what you need to do is pick up some of the medium, roughly the same to begin with. There's one, and then two, and then a little bit more from in there. There we go, and then start mixing those together. So this way we get a diluted version of the paint that's going to dry a bit more evenly than shade normally would. So with that ready, all you've got to do is make sure your brush just isn't overloaded. There we go. And then on the men here's and also these parts in the dais too for the blue, pick one segment at a time and apply an even coat of this over the top of it. So keep an eye out for it pooling too much, especially in cracks in between the stone, for example, just there. You can use your brush to absorb by the excess. But see what this does is leaves just a thin coating of that yellow on there, which shifts it quite dramatically towards more of a green. And with that, we've now glazed those details, giving them a much greener appearance. And to finish them off, all we need to do now is add a fine highlight to these details. So for this, what we need is some Baharoth blue. And then with that done, we just need to do a little bit of neatening up on those men here, for which we need Stormhost silver once more. 
But first we need Baharoth Blue, and to apply it I'm going back to my Detail Brush from the Army Painter. And with this all we're looking to do is to pick out all the sharpest features on these areas. So what you need to do is just make sure the paint's nicely thinned down on your palette with that water, there like that. Just check it to make sure it's flowing well from your brush, there we go. And then using this, what we want to do is to start picking out all the sharpest edges. So if we take a look at this men here, just here, what I'm looking to do is use the side of my brush just to skim along this outer edge like this to get a finer line just to finish it off. So it's very much like when we were doing that fine highlight on the spines earlier on. Now really the most important thing to do is these outer edges like this, and just you can see I'm rotating this piece around so I can easily access these edges comfortably there like that. If you want to take it a little bit further, what you can do is also pick out these cracks for which just very gently just run along them there like that. Although whether you do or not is entirely up to you. And finally we just need to return to Stormhost Silver just to neaten up the outer edge here. So for this, once again using the side of your brush, just gently skim along this area like this. And with that we've now finished Phase 1, and we can move on to Phase 2 as we start to paint the crew. We're now ready to move on to the second phase of painting the miniature, and that is to paint the models that stand on the dais. So for this we're going to be painting Zerak, and also the two triarchal Pharons, and the cloak as well. Now you'll notice with the miniatures of the Pharons and also Zerak, I've glued them onto a base. And this is a 32mm round base for each miniature. Just a spare base I had, the size of it doesn't really matter. But the reason why I've done this is because it allows me to have something to hold whilst I'm painting the miniature. Without this you'll find it's very difficult because you'll be handling all the fresh paint and it gets especially awkward when you start using some washers. So doing this is a really good idea to make things a lot easier, and it means we can use one of the Citadel painting handles too. Now if you're going to do this, what you need to do is use some super glue. Don't use plastic glue because it will make too strong a join. Super glue though is quite brittle, so once we've fully painted the models, it's quite easy to pop them off these bases. Now to do this, what you must make sure that you do is only use a very small amount of super glue underneath one heel of each miniature. The reason for this is then it's going to be quite a loose fitting, so it's easy to break the model away, and you can in fact slide a knife blade underneath the toes of the foot that's glued down and just pop it off that way. So it's the best way of doing it. Without that, it can be quite difficult to do, and there is a risk of damage the miniature, so that's definitely what I recommend. Anyway, what we're going to do first of all is start painting Zerak's body, and for this what we need to do is paint him a platinum colour to begin with. Canaptech Alloy is a perfect colour for this, and to apply it what I've got here is a large dry brush from the Army Painter. And with this all you've got to do is get some onto your palette as ever, thin down with that touch of water to ensure it's nice and smooth, there we go. And then once your brush is loaded up, it's just a matter of painting it all over his body. So don't worry about finer details for the time being, just make sure that you cover everything. Now remember earlier on when we were first of all painting some colours onto the dais, I mentioned that with the lead belter undercoat it can be very smooth, paint some times can struggle to fit to, uh, as well to stick onto it. Now that is going to be the case here, and in fact if you look closely at this first coat you can still see that lead belcher showing through in some parts. So with this colour be sure to apply two thin coats before you move on to the next stage. And there we are, the Canaptech alloy has been applied, and you can see it's really, really shiny, and it's very silvery still, but don't worry, we are going to be adding a wash to that later on to tint it a little bit more towards gold. But what we need to do now is base coat two more metallic colours on the miniature. And so for this, first of all, we need some Retributor armor for all the gold details, which form the inner skeleton of the model. And then we're going to move on to Rune Lord Brass, which is going to be the base coat for his crown and loincloth. But first of all we need Retributor armor, and to apply this I'm going to use a regiment brush from the Army Painter, which is a really nice size for this kind of detail. And again you just need to use the palette to get the paint ready, just adding that touch of water to make sure it's nice and smooth and under control. And then what we need to do is start to apply this to all those interior details on the miniature. So for example I'm looking at areas like on here, you can see that interior skeleton beneath his body piece is just there. All we need to do is start blocking out areas like this. And then finally, using Rune Law Brass, we're ready to base coat the crown and also the loincloth. With those base coats now blocked in, we can move on to the next step, which is going to be to wash all of them. And each different tone of metal requires a different colour. So first of all, what we need is some Seraphim Sepia, which is going to be used for that outer platinum tone to shift it a little bit more towards gold. And then we're going to move on to some Cryptek Armour Shade, which is going to be for the crown and the loincloth. Finally, we just need Agrax Earthshade, and this will be for that interior skeleton. 
But first of all, we need Seraphim Sepia, and to apply it, I've returned to that regiment brush from the Army Painter. And with this, I am going to use the palette just to help control how much I'm painting on it once, because I don't want to swamp the model with this colour. I just want a thin coat applied over it. This is to prevent it pooling anywhere, and also just to tint each of these panels with that yellow. So, for example, I'm going to start out with just one panel and go for this part on the thigh just here. All you do is apply the colour thinly over like that, and you'll see straight away it shifts it towards more of a gold. Next, we're ready to apply some Cryptek Armour Shade, and this is for everything that we originally base coated using Rune Lord Brass. So that's the crown and also the loincloth. Now this is a gloss shade, so it is going to dry very shiny in the deepest recesses, but don't worry about that because we will resolve that issue in the next step. And finally, we're ready to add some Agrax Earth Shade, and this is initially for all of that golden detail. So all the Retributor armor we originally painted on, such as in the joints around here. Just need to wash it over all of those to give some definition to it. Now in addition, at this stage, we can revert back to those parts we painted with Cryptek Armor Shade, because that shine has gone quite strong in the deepest recesses, and these need to be much duller. So what you can do with this color is just run it into those deeper areas like that, and on the loincloth, just let the, run, just let the paint just run into those little areas in between there like that. Finally, this is also a great opportunity to darken down some of the areas on the platinum body that need to be darker. For example, these little gaps that we've got in this kind of rib cage here, just dotting the paint in areas like that, and also in between the fingers, such as just up here. With those washes completely dry, we can now move on to the next step, which is to start to brighten up some of these panels and put some highlights on there. And the first stage for doing this is going to be a little bit of glazing and layering. Now to do this, first of all, we need to return to the darkest of these colours that we were using, which is Rune Lord Brass, and this is going to be for the crown and the loincloth. And to do this, what you should do is go for a medium-sized brush again. I'm using my regiment brush from the Army Painter, and with this, what I'm looking to do is to apply a very thin coat of this colour just on specific areas on these panels. So to do that, we need to water this paint down quite heavily, so much so that it's going to start to look like it's separating on your palette. You can see I'm putting quite a bit of water in there like that, so it's very runny. What's really important about applying the paint like this is if you put it on a lot like we've got here, it'll go into kind of blobs and it won't give a smooth finish. So what you need to do is to absorb away all the excess paint off on your palette there like that, draw up a small amount fresh, and in fact, you know what, that needs to be a little bit more watery. There we go, that's better, that's more like it. So get rid of the excess off on some tissue, Draw up fresh, there's only a small amount on there, and on each of these panels, what we're looking to do is to go towards the top of them and apply a small amount. So just along there to just above halfway, then quickly wash your brush, and whilst it's still damp and the paint's still wet, just draw it a little bit further down like that so you get a gradual transition on each of these panels going from light at the top towards dark at the bottom. And with that done, we can now move on to the next step, which is to repeat this with some Canoptech Alloy on those platinum coloured arm panels. However, we're also going to do some highlighting with this colour, which we'll come to in just a moment. But first of all, for that layering, what you need to do is the same thing as what we did in the previous step. So it's back to that regiment brush, and again, getting that paint really thin down on your palette. So plenty of water mixed in there like that until it becomes very, very thin. There we go. And then using this, what we need to do is apply a thin coat towards the top of each of these panels. So again, get rid of the excess paint off your brush, load up a small amount fresh like this, then pick one panel at a time, and for example this thigh on here, and apply a small amount towards the top there like that, and then whilst it's still wet, quickly wash your brush, and just draw some of that paint further down there like that, so you get that transition from light to dark on each one. Now in addition, what we need to do is some highlighting with this colour, and for this what we need to do is change brush. I'm going to my detail brush from the Army Painter now, and using this what we need to do is to get a small amount thinned down. So I'll use some of that thinned down one we got just there, mix that in so it's flowing very well from the brush there like that. And with this what we want to do is to pick out all the edges on the darker metal and also the gold. So for example, if we take a look at the hips just here, what I'm going to do is look to use the side of my brush just to skim along all these sharper edges, for example around there like that, to give these details a nice highlight. And with that done, all we need to do now is apply a final highlight onto the platinum of his body. And to do this, what we need is Stormhost Silver, and this is just going to be that pure edge highlight like we did in that previous stage. This time though, still apply that detail brush, we want to be very careful just to catch those very brightest areas. So as ever, make sure that paint's thinned down on your palette there, there you go, and just make sure there's a small amount on there. 
And what we're looking to do with this is to follow those edges on the kind of armor that's on top of that inner skeleton. So for example, on the arm just here, again, using the side of my brush, I'm just going to just graze along that area just there to get that fine highlight appearing on that edge. And it's really just a matter of just always angling the model so your brush can reach that area, just gently skimming along those edges like this. And with that highlight applied, we've now actually painted the vast majority of Zarak, and we are gonna come back to him later on to paint that staff, but now we're gonna leave him for the time being and move on to the next feature, which is actually going to be his cloak. Now this cloak has got a strange kind of bluish metallic feel to it, a very alien appearance. And to do that, what we need to do is establish a nice silver mid-tone. Now it has already been undercoated using lead belcher spray, but at this stage, as we're aware, this is a very smooth undercoat color, and the techniques we're gonna be using on it require it to have a little bit more grip for the paints we're gonna be putting on it, otherwise I'll just wash straight off it. So what we need to do is apply a new mid-tone to it. And for this, we're actually going to go for Iron Hand Steel, which is a little bit lighter than Lead Belcher. Now to apply it, just go for a largish brush. I'm using a large dry brush here from the Army Painter for this. And all you've got to do is get some ready on your palette, as ever thin down with that touch of water. There we go. And once you've got that ready, all you need to do is start base coating this all across the cloak. And this is also a great opportunity to catch any parts that you might have missed with the undercoat, especially on the deeper areas of the creases. With that base coat established, we can now move on to the next stage. And in fact, as we do move on to this stage, it's really important that you get some clean water now because we have been using a lot of metallic paints and so a lot of metal flecks are gonna be floating around the water. It's inevitable that some of those will find their way into the next paints we're gonna be using. So definitely make sure you get some clean water now. And what we are in fact gonna do now is introduce that bluish green tint to the cloak. And to do this, we're gonna use some contrast paints. Achillean green is a great color to use for this, but it's a very strong contrast paint. So it is important we dilute it with some contrast medium. And it's also important that we use contrast medium here rather than water because it ensures it will dry nice and smoothly on the cloak. If you use water instead, it will start to pool and it will go really patchy. So contrast medium is definitely the way to go to mitigate this as best we can. Now to get this mix ready, what you need to do is to go for a good large brush. A medium shade brush from Citadel is what I've got here, which is great for this kind of thing. And I'm going to start out with some of the contrast paints so you can see the kind of mix I'm making on the palette. So one full brush full on there like that. You can see just how strong it is. So I'm going to start with one there and pick up a second one as well. So that's two there like that. And you can see a really good puddle there. And in fact, we want quite a lot here because we want to try and do the whole thing in one go here. And having lots of paint on the palette is important to do that. But we now need to get some medium. So let's make sure the brush is clean before getting any so I don't contaminate it with any color. And I want to go for a roughly two to one ratio against the color here. So I'm going to go for four brushfuls here of this medium. So starting out with one, there we go, two, three, and four, so an awful lot here, but you can see by mixing these together, I can now create a very diluted version of this color. Looks a little bit kind of cloudy, but that's because the medium is sort of faintly white. It'll dry clear once it is dry. So once you've got that mix created kind of like that, just test it to make sure it's very aquamarine looking like that. And then just get rid of some of that excess off of there load up fresh, and then we're ready to start applying it to the cloak. So it can be a little bit fiddly on a shape like this, especially when there's no base to hold. So to begin with, what you should do, hold the middle of it, pick a starting point on one side. So complete the outside and then move on to the inside. So I'm gonna begin down here, remembering this is a contrast paint. So it's a bit like using a felt tip pen. Start from a point like this and just work your way around, not returning to areas that you've previously applied the paint to. And notice that I'm applying it quite thinly letting it collect mostly in these creases that we've got, but I'm just moving it and making sure it doesn't collect too much on these raised surfaces. Just going all the way around like this. Now, as you get towards the middle here, of course, you can have to start moving your hands out the way. And as you get further and further, eventually you'll start to run out of areas to hold. Now, when that happens, instead move up to these orbs we've got on top and just hold the piece from that so you can still carry on painting as you go. Now, once you've done the outside, let it dry completely and then repeat this process on the inside as well. Allow that mix to dry and you'll be left with a bluish green sheen on that silver. And with that done, what we can do now is start to emphasize the darker areas in these creases where you can see it settled down there. Now to do this, we're actually going to be reverting to water instead of using contrast medium. And that might seem a little bit weird considering what we spoke about in the previous step. But now it's actually a little bit different because the contrast mix that we put onto that metallic has given a different surface to what the metallic paint did. It's actually slightly rougher. And you'll find now that as you put further contrast paint onto it, it behaves differently and sticks better where you put it. So now what we can do instead is dilute the paint using some water. And this is important, as you'll see shortly. So different water here and not contrast medium. But again, what we need is Achillean green. And now I'm using my regiment brush to apply it. And what I'm going to do is get some onto the palette like previously. There we go, a little puddle of it like that. And now I'm going to dilute it using some water. So let's get a good amount of there on the brush. 
There we go, and start mixing that in. And what I'm looking for is a thinned version, kind of like that. So you see it's stronger than the previous step, but it's not pure straight out the pot. So with that ready, what we need to do now is load up with some of this, and importantly, making sure that we're not getting loads on the brush. So just load up fresh, having used a tissue to get rid of the excess paint. And with this, what we need to do is to paint it into recessed areas that we want to exaggerate this color on. So for example, if we look at this one just here, what I'm gonna do is just start painting it into that area like that, and a small amount, there. Then quickly wash your brush, and whilst it's still damp, just sort of go back and forth on either side like that, which you see just blends out that contrast paint and gives a smooth transition from that lighter silver to the deeper blue in the recess. There like that. Keep an eye out for any patches, just absorb away any excess there like that. And there we go. Now this is why it's important to use the water, because you see what's happened here now is it's fading out, but that contrast medium actually gives a kind of near matte finish to these areas, whereas water just evaporates away and minimizes the amount of contrast paint on there. So this way, the metallic shine along there is brighter than it would be otherwise. And you can also tell by the quick nature of having to change paints like what I did just there, you can see it's actually really difficult to use medium there instead. Now you can do this as many times as you like to really exaggerate the darkness, it's really up to you. I'm going to go for two coats on each of these areas, but you can see the technique throughout all of them is just the same, just drawing that paint out so it fades out around the surrounding area. Once you're happy with that gradient, we're then ready to move on to darkening down the very deepest recesses just a little bit more. And for this, all we need is a small amount of Norn Oil, and this is just to be applied directly into those deeper recesses. And for the application, it's much like what we did in the previous step. Again, using a regiment brush, just gonna get a small amount onto the palette like that. Not gonna water it down to begin with, but what we want to do is apply it just like we are doing with the and Green. So looking for those deepest recesses, for example in here, so applying a small amount into that area like that, and then straight away washing the brush. Whilst it's still damp, again, just draw it out on either side. And there we are, the cloak is now shaded, and we can move on to the next step, which is to layer and then highlight it. And for this, to layer it, what we need is some iron hand steel, and then for the highlight, some storm host silver. But for iron hand steel, first of all, go back to your regiment brush, and with this, what we're looking to do is to apply a thin, smooth layer of this on the raised areas to start to take away that blue, so the blue's only really left in the recesses. So thin it down on your palette, so it's nice and smooth. There we are, a little bit more than we normally do. So it's kind of like that, you see, it's quite translucent, it's quite runny. And with this, what we're looking to do now is to look for those raised parts. So if you look at the back of the cloak, we're looking at this kind of area here. What I'm going to do is start applying it to these areas like this, going downwards, following the direction of the creases to ensure it gets a nice smooth finish to it. So all you need to do now is look for these raised up areas and gently apply this colour like this. And finally, we're ready to apply a highlight of Stormhost Silver. Now for the creases, look for the edges where they catch the light, such as this one here, and just paint a line of this colour, just gently following all the way down like that. Then for the outside edge as well, just use the side of your brush to skim all the way round. And with that, the highlighting on the cloak is complete. Now we are gonna to return to it later on because we do need to add some hints of green on those kind of square-like digital parts on it. But for now, we're ready to move on to the next detail of the crew, which is going to be to paint the two triarchal ferrons because it's time to paint their bodies. Now remember they've been undercoated with lead belcher as well, but the first step for painting them is to really darken down that internal skeleton to get it to a near black metallic. And for this, what we need is some black Templar, which is again, one of the contrast paints. Now to apply it, I'm using a monster brush from the Army Painter, which is a good size for what we want to cover, because with this colour, you want to paint most of them. So I'm not going to water it down or anything with any water. I'm just going to get the paint ready on the palette and draw it from there. And what we want to do is to paint this over the details to making sure that we cover this internal skeleton, for example, around here, and also any armour plating. Don't worry about the staff or these cables coming out the back. Just make sure that you cover the body. And remember with contrast paints, think of it like you're colouring in with felt-tip pens. So starting at one point, such as the leg around here, then just gradually work your way around the miniature. Once the contrast paint is dry on both the ferrons, we can then move on to the next step, which is to start to paint in all the various layers of metallics on top of this inner skeleton. And for this, what we'll need first of all is some Rune Lord brass, which will form the main color for their armor. Then after that, we need some Retributor armor for some more decorative details, and finally some Canoptech alloy, which forms some lighter details on them. But first of all, we need Rune Lord brass, and to apply it, I'm going back to my regiment brush from the Army Painter. And with this, we just need to block in these details. So remember to help out with that. Make sure your paint is thinned down so it's flowing smoothly and under control. And once you've got that ready, it's just a matter of identifying these kind of armoured parts on top of the inner skeleton and base coating them. So for example, on the legs, you can see there's a small part down here. So I'm looking at painting this area 
going around there on the, the carpet there. And then we've got the thigh just there for which we just want to block it in like this. And you can see the paint's a little bit translucent. So just apply two thin coats before you move on to the next step. Once all that armor's base coated, you're then ready to move on to Retributor armor. Now this is for this kind of collar that we've got around here with all these little symbols on and also these parts that are hanging down from here. So be sure to base coat all of these. In addition, you can use this to break up some details on the staff too. And for this, a good thing to look for is little collars such as just around here. And then finally, we're ready to base coat the lighter shade of brass using Canoptec alloy. And this is just for the face plate and also the tops of the shoulders. And with those base coats blocked in, we can now move on to washing them. And for this, we need two washers. First of all, Cryptek Armor Shade, which is going to be for all the brass panels. But then after that, we'll need some Agrax Earth Shade. This is going to be for the gold, but also to take away some of the shine from the Cryptek Armor Shade that will stay in the deepest recesses of that brass armor. But first of all, we need that Cryptek Armor Shade. And I'm sticking to my regiment brush for applying this because my painting this on is very much like when we were applying Seraphim Sepia to the Silent King. What we want to do is pick one panel at a time and just apply a thin coat of this over it. So just use your palette to make sure your brush isn't overloaded. And it's just a matter of picking one area at a time, for example, this leg, and just painting it over this area like this. Once that wash is dry, we can then move on to Agrax Earth Shade. And this is first of all for all this gold detail, so areas such as along here. But in addition, keep an eye out for any recesses on the brass panels that are shining where really we don't want them to be shiny. They need to be much darker in the recess you see and not catch the light. So for example, we're looking at areas such as just beneath these sort of wings and the shoulders, areas like this. Once those washers are dry, we're then ready to move on to the next step, which is to start to highlight that armor. And the first stage for doing this is to do some glazing on that deeper copper color. And for this, what we need to do is return to Rune Lord Brass, and we're going to apply it very much like when we started layering on Zerak. Remember when we started doing those glazes on his armor to make it lighter towards the top of each panel. Exactly the same thing here. So to apply it, go back to that regiment brush, and with Rune Lord Brass, you just need to get it really thinned down on your palette. So get some on there and then some water load on your brush and mix that in so it becomes really thin, kind of like that, you see. And then, like we did in those earlier stages, just get rid of the excess on some tissue, load up fresh so your brush isn't overloaded, and then pick one panel at a time and just apply it towards the top. So I'm going to go for this thigh piece just here. What I'm going to do is just turn it so I can easily access it by applying it like that. And then when I'm about halfway down, wash your brush, just make sure it's damp, and then just to use that to pull it the rest of the way down. Now like that to get a nice gradual transition from lighter at the top towards darker at the bottom. Once you've finished doing that onto the darker brass areas, noting that I didn't do it on those parts we layered that were lighter, such as the face and the shoulders, we can now move on to doing some actual layering on the other metallics. And for this, what we need to do is return to Retributor Armor and then some Canoptech Alloy. First of all though, with Retributor Armor, again using that regiment brush, with this what we're looking to do is to apply a thin coat towards the top of all these gold panels to really help the light to catch it and really make it nice and shiny. So once you get paints thinned down like that, all you've got to do is look for these flat areas. For example, these parts that we've got hanging down here, it's just a matter of using the side of your brush just to pick out these raised areas like this. And with that gold nice and shiny now, we can return to Canoptech Alloy, and this is to apply over those lighter parts that we did previously, so the face plate and also the shoulders. And again, we're just looking to paint it onto these smooth surfaces, looking for recesses though, such as at the side of that part just there on the face, and leaving that a little bit darker, and applying it there on the other side like that to retain the definition that we got from the shading. Now in addition, at this stage, we can use this color to start to highlight all the darker brass as well. And remember on Serac, when we were looking for the edges of the panels, exactly the same process here. Just gently run along them there like this. And with Canoptech Alloy applied, you can see now the face and the shoulders is much lighter than the rest of the body. And in fact, the rest of the body has been nicely highlighted too. And now all we need to do is to finish off the highlights in these details by first of all using some Liberator Gold to finish the gold details, and then some Stormpost Silver to highlight that Canoptech Alloy that's on the face and the shoulders. But first with Liberator Gold, I'll go for your smaller brush. So I'm using my detail brush once again for this. And all we've got to do is get a small amount ready so we can start picking out the edges on the gold detail. So once your paint's thinned down like that, so it's flowing well from your brush, 
It's just a matter of looking for those areas, just gently picking them out. So on these parts we've got running down here, just use the side of your brush to work your way along, just picking out the edges like this. But when you get to these parts in the middle, it's time just to be a little bit more careful. So really brace your hands and just gently run the brush along those edges, just very lightly. I am actually using the side there, but you can see I'm just being very precise about how I run it along. When it comes to this detail on here, instead use the side of your brush and flatter on it like that. Just gently run it along so you pick out the raised area. And finally, we just need some Stormhost Silver to highlight all the lighter parts that we painted with Canoptech Alloys layer earlier on. So this is the shoulders around here and also the faceplate. And with that, we now finish painting the two bodies of the Pharons, and we can move on to painting the finer details of their staffs. And this will also include Zerak, and we're going to concentrate on him. But what we do on his staff is going to be exactly the same as on the two Pharons. And first of all, we need to paint the small teal details that appear on them. Now to do this, we're going to use the same technique as what we used on the teal details that appear on those men here and also the dais. And this means we need to start out with a base coat of Stegodon scale green, and then we're going to dry brush them using Sotek green, followed by Temple Guard blue. So first of all then we need Stegodon scale green, and I'm back to my regiment brush to apply this. And all we've got to do is get a small amount of that paint ready on the palette. There we go. Thin down as ever, and once you've got that ready, it's just a matter of blocking these details out. So they tend to appear towards the end of the staffs. In the case of Zerak, we're looking at these parts just here. With the base coat applied, we're now ready to dry brush these details using Sotek Green. And we're doing it now because later on we can neaten up around the surrounding area using silver. Now when you are dry brushing this, just be careful as you do it, because if you go straight in, you can see the staff actually really bends a lot. And if you're too vigorous, you'll break it. So just brace your hand behind it, and this way it keeps it nice and steady. And with that colour built up, we're now ready to make it a little bit lighter, this time using some Temple Guard Blue, applied just a little bit lighter than we did in the previous step. Once you finish that dry brushing, we're then ready to shift the tone of the colour to make it much more green, just like we did on those larger parts of teal. And so for this, what we need to do is use some Cassandra Yellow mixed with some Contrast Medium. Now after that, we're ready for the final highlight, and for this, what we need is some Baharoth Blue. But first of all, it's time to make that mix. So Contrast Medium and some Cassandra Yellow, and what we want to do is create that roughly 50-50 mix on the palette. So starting out with some Cassandra Yellow, there we go, and then get some of the Medium. There we are, mix them together so it's nice and flowing well, there we go, and then it's just a matter of loading up some of this and painting it directly over the top of those teal details. So this one for example, just smoothly applying it over the whole area to shift it much more towards the green. And once that's dry, you're then ready to move on to Baharoth Blue to finish these details off as a fine highlight. So for this, I'm using my detail brush from the Army Painter. And with that, the teal on the staffs is complete, and now we can move on to the next area of colour, which is going to be all the silver detail on the staffs. Now for this, we're going to start out with a base coat of Iron Hand Steel, before washing over that with some Basilicarnum Grey, which is one of the contrast paints. And after that, we'll return to Iron Hand Steel for a layer, before finishing off with a highlight of Stormhost Silver. But first of all, we need Iron Hand Steel, and there's actually two things we can do at the same time with this. To begin with, we've got a detailed painting that's not actually on the staffs at all. So for this, I'm using a detail brush, because what we need to do is to highlight that really dark near black metal that appears on the Pharons. So to do this, just get a small amount, and like with those hearts we did it earlier, all we've got to do is look for sharper edges on these details and pick them out. So for example, we've got all these joints on the legs, just a matter of looking for edges and just running your way around them, such as like that just there, and you can see there's one up here on the elbow too, so around there, so all areas like that. In addition, we need to look out for those silver details on the staff, of course, which is the main part of this. And for this, switch to a larger brush, I have my regiment brush here from the Army Painter, and with this, what we want to do Let's get a bit more on the palette and just at this stage start blocking in anything that's going to be silver. So we're looking at these little kind of designs and things up towards the top, just here. At this stage as well, it's also a great opportunity to neaten up around the teal from the dry brushing earlier on, on these areas just here. Once you finish base coating with Iron Hand Steel, we're then ready to paint over these details using some Basilicarnum Grey. And at this stage, don't worry at all about the details that are going to be black, we will be coming to those later on. Once that contrast is dry, we're then ready to return to Iron Hand Steel to apply a thin layer to these details. And what we're looking to do is to paint it onto the flatter areas, such as the middle of these parts here, just to bring that shine back to them.
And finally, using Stormhost Silver, we're ready to apply an edge highlight to all of these silver details. And with that highlight applied, the silver is now complete and now ready to move on to painting in those black details. And for this, what we need is a base coat of matte black from the Army Painter. And then to highlight it, we'll need some Mechanicus Standard Grey, first of all, followed by some Administratum Grey. But first of all, we need that matte black. And you can see I've already got some on my palette just here. I'm going to apply this using the Regiment brush here from the Army Painter. And with this, you just need to get some ready, thin down as ever, and load it up onto your brush. And then it's just a matter of blocking out all the details that are going to be black. Now, this is, of course, mostly on the staff, which is on the grip just here. But at this stage, it's also a good idea to base coat in the little ank symbols that appear on their chests. For example, just around here. I finished base coating that black, and you can see I also painted in all those cables in the chest. And with that done, we're now going to move on to our first highlight. Beginning with Mechanica Standard Grey, apply the detail brush. We're looking for all the edges on these black details. And finally, we're ready to complete all the black detail with a fine highlight of Administratum Grey. Apply to all the sharpest edges and places that will catch the light. So for example, at the top there, at the ends of these spines as well, just got small areas like this. Now once this is done, you've reached the end of the second phase. And with that done, we can now move on to part three, which is going to be to paint in all the glowing green details. We're now ready to move on to the third and final phase of painting the Silent King before we phase out, and that is to start painting all the green details, which are scattered across all the various assemblies of the model. Now, to start out with these, what we need to do is ensure that we get a really bright and punchy green so it stands out clearly. And the best way to do this is to effectively undercoat all these parts with a white or an off-white. So that's exactly what we're going to do now, and to do this, what we need is some Corax White from Citadel, which is actually an off-white, but it's actually a very strong colour, so it'll apply very well onto the model now. Now, it's also a very thick paint, which you'll find as soon as you open it. You might even need to stir it rather than just shaking to get it ready. And you can see I've got mine here. See just how thick this paint is. But I've now switched over to my wet palette to thin it down, so the thickness isn't a problem. And the reason why I'm using a wet palette now is because I expect this stage to take quite a while. It's, uh, well, you might want to put some music on for this one, because uh, there's a lot to do here. Now, for this, what you need to do is, as ever, thin it down, and you'll find the wet palette really holds it for a long time. So you can just, you know, take your time as you start picking out all these areas. But it is important that you thin it down to make sure it applies smoothly to the areas that you want to be green. And once you've done that, you're ready to start applying it. Now I'm starting out with a regiment brush because it's a great all-purpose size for the details that we're covering here. But you can switch as you want to. But really what we're looking for to begin with is orbs, such as this one just here. And it's a matter of essentially just blocking it in like this, just being careful of any details you want to keep a different colour. Now these orbs are scattered all across the miniature, and you mustn't feel like you have to do all of them, because well, if you want to do all of them, there's an awful lot of them, including even on the stairs, you can see they're scattered all the way down it. As I say, it's entirely up to you whether you do that or not, but the important ones to get are these orbs that really stand out. Also, you need to be sure to base coat the blades that the on, on the staffs of the various crew on the back. And also, of course, we've got the katan up here, so you need to make sure you base coat this guy too, including all the lightning as well. Well, it's been a while, but as you can see, these details are now a smooth off-white. And it's important that you take your time there to ensure that all these details remain nice and smooth as you build up that colour. But as you can see, I picked out a number of the orbs. I didn't go for the ones on the steps, but I have picked a number around the hull of the war machine and on the back just there as well. And also the blades of the crew, and of course the orbs on the men here too. And uh, well, with that done, we can now move on to the next step. Now that step will take quite a while, because it's important that you really take your time with it to get it smooth. But if you do, you'll find this next stage is really, really fun, because now we're going to get a bright green on those details details and it's really going to pop straight away. The colour to use is Moot Green and I'm going to be applying it to begin with again with my regiment brush but as before just change brush sizes as you need to and as before just make sure it's thinned down. There we go and once you've got some loaded up and it's nice and smooth it's just a matter of painting this directly over these details that we've been painting with that off-white. So for example if I start with these orbs just here you see as I apply it on it's just going to go bright green straight away. So now it's just a matter of doing this across all these details that you previously blocked out. Thank you. 
And with that, at long last, all the details are now a bright green and we can move on to adding a bit more definition to all these various details. Now, they all actually have quite a few different textures. So even though we're going to be using the same kind of colors, we're going to be approaching the details on the miniature in different ways. And to begin with, what we want to do is go out painting that Catan and the Lightning. And for this, the first stage is to use a contrast paint. Now, Warp Lightning is the one to go for here, but this is quite a strong paint. So what we're going to do is dilute it with some contrast medium because we don't want to take away too much brightness from that green you see. Instead, just get a little bit of darkness in the recesses on the Catan's body and on the Lightning too. So to make this mix, go for a larger brush. I'm using a monster brush here from the Army Painter and I want to make a roughly 50-50 mix of this colour. So back to my normal palette for this to make sure it behaves correctly. So that's one and two brushfuls and then clean your brush to get that contrast medium. If in doubt, have more contrast medium than you think you're going to need because you can always apply a second coat should you need to. But what I'm going to do is just get a full brushful there and then two, and then mix those together like that. So you see I'm getting a more diluted version of that paint. So there we go, once that's all mixed together, it's just a matter of making sure your brush isn't overloaded with it. And there we are. And then all you've got to do is start applying it directly over the Catan and the Lightning, just letting it settle mostly in the recess detail. So remember with contrast paint, pick a starting point. I'm going to start here next to that orb, and then just run it all the way across it there like that, just letting it settle, and then just leaving it to dry there like that. Allow that contrast paint to dry and then you'll see you get a really nice smooth green in the deeper recesses of the Catan and also the lightning, including the stuff on the Menhirs. And with this, we can now move on to the next step, which is to do some layering and some highlighting on these details. So for this, first of all, we need to return to Moot Green, but then we're going to move on to Highlights. And for this, first of all, I'm going to use some Moon Dust from the Army Painter. Although if you want to stick to Citadel paints, then here Phalanx Yellow is the one to go for. Then after that, we're going to move on to a highlight for which we need a pure white. So I'm going to use Matte White from the Army Painter. But first of all, we need that moot green, and I've gone back to my wet palette for this, and I've still got my regiment brush to apply it. This time, what I'm going to do is make sure I thin it so it's very smooth on this palette. So really bring it down with some water like this, because what we want is a very smooth finish to it as we apply it to the model, and to allow a bit of the darker colour to show through as well. So it's very important you bring it down to this point. Just test on your palette, just check and see if it's got that translucency. So there we go. And then all you've got to do is start applying it to this model. Now, what we're looking for here is to avoid the deeper recesses and to paint it onto the raised areas to get a smooth highlight starting to appear. So on the chest, for example, you can see this kind of design we've got there. What I'm going to do is start smoothly applying a single coat like this, put in the direction of the muscle and just avoiding those recesses. Now what this is doing is neatening up that colour on the flatter areas you see. All the areas I'm applying it to are becoming much smoother and much neater. So it's just a matter of taking your time doing this. And when it comes to the lightning, instead, use the side of your brush rather than the tip and just approach it side on like this and just use this to catch those edges where the colour is a little bit lighter. Once you've finished with Warpstone Glow, you're then ready to move on to adding a highlight of Moon Dust. And for this, just turn the model so you can comfortably access these details, because what we're looking to do is to paint lines of this colour towards the top of each of these muscles where they would catch the light. So for example, on this one, it's gradually going to build up the colour there like that. Now you can see this is actually a very thin paint, so I'm able to apply just a small amount of it and then just draw it down beneath that. And this way I get a nice transition from a lighter sort of yellowy green at the top gradually getting darker the further down we go. And it's just a matter of looking for each one and applying it lightly like this. When you come to areas such as the face, again, look for parts where the light would catch. So in this case, it's going to be around the eyes just here and the cheekbones like that, and then around the mouth, but avoiding these recessed areas where the shadow would be, such as just in there. Now, in addition, at this stage, we're going to add a highlight to the lightning. And for this, what we're looking to do is, again, to use the side of the brush to pick out these areas that are kind of corners, like on just there. So all you do is use the side of your brush, look for that sharper area, just gently pick it out and make it brighter with this colour. And finally, we're ready to move on to some matte white to really finish this off. And we don't need very much here. I have thinned it with some water, and what I'm looking for is all the sharpest features and details. So for example, the end of the nose there, you see just applying a very small amount there. And you see it's been thinned so it's not jumping out too much. But then we're looking for all the other parts that stand out the most. So in this case, we're going to have the chin, so those little bits just there. And then the muscles, we just want to emphasise this highlight we've got a little bit more. So that means just a very fine line just at the very top of them, just there and just there. You see, not too much so we don't overdo it, just a little bits just to finish that off. Now for the lightning, what we're looking for is these kind of corners that we've got, such as just here. And all you do is just touch a little bit of this colour at the very sharpest area there, like that.
And with that fine highlight applied, the katan and the lightning is now complete and we can move on to the next area of green, which is going to be the blades on the staffs. Now for this, the first step is to apply a glaze of warpstone glow. And by glaze, what I mean is a really thin coat of this. And what we're gonna do is build up lots of multiple thin coats to get a transition from a lighter green to a darker green. Now this is just the first stage of it, but the technique's going to be very much the same throughout. All you have to do is to get a small amount of this paint and put it onto your palette and then heavily thin it down with some water. So. Mix it in there like that and test on the palette until it's sort of behaving like this, you see. What you can do, get rid of the excess off your brush and then just try painting it on the palette like that and you can see just how thin that color is. This is exactly what we want to get onto the blades of the staff. So starting out with this one on, on Zarak just here, what you do is pick one side on one edge, so the cutting edge just here and apply this really thin coat like this around about three quarters of the way down like that. So you see it's barely noticeable, but it is starting to make it a darker green up there. And because it's so thin, it dries very quickly. Now whilst that's drying, what we're gonna do is flip to the inside here and basically do the same thing. So starting from this point here, what I'm gonna do is just bring that up to around about there, again, three quarters and then stop there. Just being careful of that bump of paint just there like that. And there we go. When it gets down to this part just beneath, just flip this round. So we had the dark going to there. I want the dark now to be down here. So again, we're just going to apply some of this going up this area here up to around about there. Now, once that first coat's dry, you basically just repeat this, but a little bit further up. So again, on this cutting edge, I'm going to start on this side this time and just in one motion, just sweep it all the way up to the end there like that. And then we'll repeat that on the other side. So this time I'm going to start here and then just bring it down to the base there like that and then do the same down here. And really it's just a matter of building this up through successive coats until you start to get to a pure warpstone glow from around about two thirds of the way down. I built up four coats of warpstone glow and you can see now the color is solid towards either side of the blade but gradually transitioning to that lighter color on the opposite side as well. And with that done, we can now move on to the next step which is to take the effect a bit further for which we need a darker green. So for this, we're gonna use some Caliban green. After that, what we then need to do is just to pick out those recessed details, those kind of circles and lines that look almost like circuit boards that are on the blades. And for this, all we need is some Beartang green. But first of all, we need Caliban Green, and to apply it, we're going to be doing very much the same technique as what we did in the previous step. So it's back to that regiment brush, a small amount on the wet palette, and you can see now I've got some fresh paper, so there's plenty of room to do this on. And what we need to do is to heavily water this down. So that's one brush full of water mixed in there, and let's get a bit more as well. There we go. And then once you've got that mixed like that, remember, don't apply it straight away because what you'll get is blobs. So it's very important that you just get rid of the excess there so that you're not overloading it with too much watery paint. So starting fresh, just load up a little bit and then test on your palette. And if you're able to paint on there like that, you see to get that kind of glaze, then that's the right consistency. So with that prepared, it's just a matter of getting that small amount on your brush and like before, applying it towards the areas where you want it to be darker. So in this case, it's gonna to be towards this end here, starting around about halfway this time and applying it in one motion all the way up towards the top of the blade there like that and then doing the opposite on the other side like that. And as before, it's just a matter of building up multiple coats until you get close or to a solid Caliban green on either side. And there we are, the Caliban green has been built up as well. And with that done, we can now move on to Beltang green. Now for this, switch to your smaller brush. So I'm using my detail brush here. And with this, what we need to do is just introduce the color into these recessed little designs that we have on the blades. Now you'll see that Beltan runs into those on its own. So it's just a matter of keeping your hand steady and just gently just dotting it in like this. So you get that darker line appearing. Now, in addition, we just need to do a little bit of a darker color on the backs of the blades as well. So just in here, just run some of the color onto the flat of it there, just like that. And with that, we now have a nice gradient on the blades and also those little designs of them have been marked out as well. And we can move on now to highlighting the blades for which we're gonna be using the same kind of colors that we highlighted the Catan and the Lightning. But as you see now, even though we're using the same sort of colors and these different applications we've got, we're getting different effects, but still tying everything together with the same tones. Now for this, what we'll need first of all is to return to Moot Green, and then we're gonna move on to Moon Dust from the Army Painter, followed by Matt White also from the Army Painter. But first of all, with Moot Green, what you need to do is go for your detail brush here. And with this, what we're looking to do is to paint a fine highlight on all the edges of the blade. So to give it a really sharp, clean appearance. So as ever, just make sure your paint's thinned. There we go. And then check the brush isn't overloaded. 
And with this, what we want to do is apply that edge highlight onto all those edges and sharp details. So on this blade on the top, for example, what I'm going to do is approach it with the side of my brush and just skim along like that to get that highlight appearing on that edge. Now, of course, because some of these areas are actually moot green, this is just going to fade away as you get to those lighter areas. But it's still important you go around all these edges because what this will do is nicely clean up. In particular, when you get to these parts on the inside, such as this little area right here, as we apply that edge highlight just running across that part, you see it just gets a nice sharp definition between the two colours there like that. So now it's just a matter of taking your time doing this around the edges of all the blades. Once that highlight's applied, we're then ready to move on to Moon Dust, which is again an edge highlight going all the way around these edges. And now you'll see it really stands out, especially against a darker green, but even against a lighter green as well. And finally, all we need is a small amount of matte white just to finish off the cutting edge of these blades. And for this, all you need to do is skim along the outer edge just along here to give that real impression of sharpness. And once you've finished applying those edge highlights, the blades will be complete. And now we can move on to the next area of green, which is going to be to paint all of those orbs. Now at the moment, they're all base coated using moot green. And what we need to do is enrich that color towards areas where these orbs meet other details. And for this, we're going to use that contrast mix that we used a while ago on the lightning and the Catan. So this is going to be some wart lightning diluted with some contrast medium. After that, we're going to glaze over them using some moot green and then some moon dust. And to finish off, we're going to be returning to moot green just to tie everything together. But first of all, we need to make that contrast mix. So this is warp lightning and contrast medium. And we're going to be doing the same kind of mix as what we had earlier on when we were doing this. So roughly 50-50. So I'm just going to start out with some warp lightning. There we go. And then get some of the medium to mix into it. Now, if in doubt, remember, put more medium in than you think you're going to need. So I'm actually going to do just a tiny bit more just to be safe. There we go. Then mix those together until you get a diluted version of that paint there. Roughly like that. Then to apply it, I'm just going to make sure my brush isn't overloaded. So just draw up fresh. There we go. And we're going to do this onto the men here's, but you just do the same process on all the other orbs. So we'll take a look at this one that we've got in the middle. So look for the areas where the orbs meet other details. This is going to be kind of around that sort of outer circle of it there. So what I'm going to do is just quickly apply it to that area like that. So you see I'm being quite generous with how much I'm putting on. And then whilst it's still wet, quickly wash your brush, make sure it's just damp and just use it just to bring that colour towards the middle there like that. And you see very quickly and very easily we get a nice gradient from darker colour that's stronger around the outer edge to being a little bit lighter in the middle. Once that contrast paint is dry, we're then ready to move on to moot green. And with this, what we're going to do is do a thin glaze in the middle of each of these orbs. And by the middle, what I really mean is the part that's most furthest away from those darker areas. So in the case of this one, you can see it's kind of the middle just here. But if we go further down to the one that's at the bottom of the men here where the lightning is, you can see it's darker where it meets that lightning. So in this case, it's more around here that we want to apply the layer. So just adjust as you need to, depending on where the orb is. Next, we're ready to do a bit of glazing using some moon dust. So once again, thin down, and this time just applied smoothly towards the middle of each orb. And as you can see, this is quite subtle, so be sure to apply two coats of it. Now, in addition, at this stage, use moon dust to pick out all of the eyes on the miniatures as well. I finished applying the moon dust and you can see it comes out a little bit patchy, but this is why we need to return to moot green now because this is going to fix it right up. All we've got to do is glaze this once again, just going around the outer edge like this with two coats just to blend those together. And with that done, the green orbs are now complete and also all the eyes on Ceres and the Pharons are now yellow as well. But we're not quite finished with the green details yet because what we need to do now is create the impression of a glow coming from these areas. And to do this, what we need is some Bealtan green and some Cassandora yellow. I'm going to mix the two of them together to get a very kind of yellowish green. So to do this, what you've got to do is go back to your regular palette and then all you need to do is make the mix. So I'm going to start out with some Bealtan green. So there we are, one brush full. And then roughly the same amount of Cassandora yellow. So I'm going to brush full, there we go, and start mixing them together to get that kind of greenish yellow colour there like that. Now it'll look a little bit murky on your palette, but when you start applying it to the miniature, you'll see it'll give a very sort of like bright hint of a glow. And the first area to do that on is actually the eyes. So I'm going to start with Xeras and using a detail brush here from the Army Painter, it's just a matter of just running this into the well of the eye like that. So it just tints the yellow and gives the impression of a greenish glow coming out from there. You see, you just let it run in and flow like that. 
There we go, simple as that. Now also we need to apply this glow to other areas, especially from the orbs that we want to give the impression of this energy sort of emanating from them. So to do that, we basically do the same thing but on a slightly larger scale. So I'll switch to my regiment brush now and I'm just going to make some more of that mix. So there we go. And then Cassandra yellow. There we are, so we get that colour there like that. And then, really it's the same sort of thing, only what we're looking for is to catch areas where the light's going to be hitting when it's emanating from these orbs. So if we take a look at this man here once again, you can see we've got the green orb just here of course, but what we want is the light kind of catching this sort of angled part we've got going all the way around the outside. So all you do is just apply it to those areas like that. So do a few of them, like about half it there like that, and quickly rinse your brush, Again, make sure it's damp, just like we have been doing, and just pull it a little bit further there like that. And this way you get the green being stronger the close towards the orb you get. And that's ideally what you want to do across all these areas that I've got the green orbs on. Just anywhere where it gets really close to them, just apply this mix so the colour gets stronger around those areas. And once you're happy with the effect, the glow is complete. And well, with that, we've also finished off all that green detail and just have one more thing left to paint on the miniature before doing the final assembly. And that is the purple gem that's on the chest of the Catan. Now to do this, we need to start out with a base coat of Nagaroth Knight to get a really dark purple, and then we can move straight onto highlighting. For this, we need Jean Steeler purple, first of all, followed by Decala Lilac, and then finally, a little bit of matte white. But first of all, we need Nagaroth Knight to base coat it. And for this, I'm going to go straight to my detail brush from the Army Painter. And we just need to get a small amount ready, thin down as ever. There we go, so that's under control. And then once you've got it prepared, all you've got to do is block out this gem. And the area that we're talking about here is this part right here. So it can be a little bit tricky holding the model to do this. So just make sure it's nice and steady. And then all you've got to do is start blocking it out. With that base coat done, we can now move on to Jean Steeler Purple. And with this colour, what we're looking to do is to paint a crescent circle going along the lower area of the gem. So just starting along here, just gradually build up that line, going all the way underneath and up again on the other side. Once you've built up that crescent, you're then ready to move on to Decala Lilac. And with this, we're looking to do very much the same thing, only making the crescent a little bit smaller and focused towards the bottom of that gem. And finally, all we need is a small amount of matte white just to add a little dot to the top of the gem just there to complete the effect of light shining through it. And with that done, well, you're now ready to make the final assembly of the model. And remember when doing this, be sure to use super glue. Don't use plastic glue because if you do, you'll ruin the paintwork. And then you're ready to base the miniature. Of course, it's entirely up to you how you base it. But for me, I'm going to go for a desert base complete with a green glow, just like we did the glow on the surrounding areas around the orbs earlier on. And with the final assemblies made and the base now fully painted, the Silent King is complete and ready to rule over the battlefield. So with a model like this, as you've seen, it's very intimidating at first glance. But so long as you approach it in the methodical order that we've shown you in this video, you'll find that painting it isn't actually at all difficult. Certainly not anywhere near as difficult as it first appears. And by following this guide, you'll end up with a model that you're really proud of and ready to show off to all your friends. Anyway, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Have fun painting the Silent King, and we'll see you all again very soon.